The scripture reading today is from Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 7. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you, I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. So I, I rarely forget a face, but all of you have had me forget your name from time to time, right? Uh, Mark's got an impeccable name after, but you know, I, I wish I had a dollar for every time I call Phyllis Felicia or, uh, uh, you know, Carl Carey or, or something like that. And most of the time, you know, you've been gracious. And if I ever do this to you again, I hope you'll just smile and laugh and correct me and say, well, you know, the old guy is trying. <laughs> uh, but we do this to our neighbors all the time, right? If, if you're a walker like me uh, and you walk dogs, you know, you probably know your neighbor's dog's names and not always the owner. You probably in your house refer to two houses down as Fido's house, right? And, and why is that? Well, I, I guess it's probably because we're more back deck people than front porch people <laughs> like our grandparents were. Um, but the effect of, of, of us knowing less people who live around us is that we are the loneliest generation probably in American history. And that has an effect. So it's, it's the powerful, audacious claim that Isaiah makes that God knows nine billion or whatever the number, seven billion, whatever it is, the names of people on earth, and God knows your name, and God knows mine. And this is the way, uh, by knowing our name, that God creates the beloved community. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, and, 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 and you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, your mayor knows, knows you by your water bill. The administration knows you by your social security number. Uh, and your neighbor knows you by your dog's name, but God knows you by your name. Powerful. And we know, right, that, uh, that loneliness has health consequences. You've, you've read plenty of studies. I don't have to remind you, but I will. Uh, Almeda County, one of the famous longitudinal studies found that people who are well connected, that is, who know a lot of their neighbors' names, uh, 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 versus people who don't, the people who are least connected, have a three times greater chance of heart disease, dying of heart disease or cancer in that nine year longitudinal study. And so, so it's radical in our passage that uh, God says, oh, I went a little early got myself confused. Hold on a second. Not only do I get confused about names. Oh, I see why. Uh, let, me, let me back in the passage before, before I... Uh, so we did the study. The study's good. That's important. So here's the situation in the passage. Um, Israel 
Islam, they're in exile, right? Babylon, you know, we've been talking about this through this Isaiah series. And uh, uh, they're, they're feeling uh, far away from home. It's sort of like that Negro spiritual, you know, a long way from home. Except as far as we know, in, uh, in the history of the time, uh, Babylon probably wasn't as cruel as we were in our slavery period. They probably didn't separate uh, partners, husbands from wives. They probably, uh, not that they were in love, they married, but they probably didn't separate lovers. They probably didn't separate children from their mothers and their fathers. Uh, as far as we know, it seems that they, they let Israel congregate in a certain area of Babylon, but they were lonely, the Israelites. <coughs> But we know that this was a very creative time in, in Israel's history. Up until now, uh, what we call the Old Testament or the Hebrew Testament had been passed on by oral tradition. We think it probably was written down for the first time during exile to, to, to uh, remind them of their Jewish identity. And we know that synagogues cropped up for the first time uh, during the period of exile to teach about their identity as the people of God. So, uh, but despite this creative time of, of cohesion, in a sense, though they were a long way from home, they still felt this. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 42 and 43 are kind of one song together, tied by uh, verse 5 there in the same chorus. And this is the sentiment in this uh, section of Psalm 43. Why must I walk about mournfully because of the oppression of the enemy? They're an exile. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? And if you read on, it, it ends up in hope, hope in God. Uh, they talk to themselves. So they were feeling lonely and distressed. But as we said, we know that that has tremendous consequences. Um, Janet tells us of Pastor George, who in her large church is the pastor of seniors. So he visits senior shut-ins, he visits seniors in the hospital, uh, he does their funerals. And uh, Pastor George uses these verses over and over and over again in his ministry because when he was 19, in World War II, Janet Hunt tells us, he was on the deck of a PT boat 19 years old, alone and afraid of battle, and these words spoke to him. When you pass through the waters on that deck of the PT boat, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Now Isaiah said that about the fact that that as God had brought them through the waters of the Red Sea out of Egypt uh, from, uh, from slavery into the Promised Land, now surely God would also bring them through the waters from exile back to their homeland. But Pastor George felt that very literally as the water splashed in his face. And so he took that. Senior, senior the shut-in who's lonely when you pass through the waters, God will be with you. Someone in the hospital who, who just got a diagnosis and, and they're all nervous and worried. And he said, and through the rivers and they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And then over and over again, these seniors, as they had had these verses uh, nourish them and nurture them at the hardest points of their lives, when they came up to the point where they were going to make that last, most lonely journey to the next life, they asked Pastor George over and over and over again, Janet writes, to use these words and read them in their funeral and preach for them. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. And in them, in them, in these words again, as millions of people before, they found comfort and strength in lonely and difficult times. But we should not think that Isaiah 43 is written only for us when we're lonely. Really, Isaiah's, uh, that's part of it, 
But Isaiah wanted to comfort uh, the lonely exiles and remind them that they were part of God's beloved community, uh, that they belonged someplace. Uh, that they, and, that's, and so a synagogue was inspired. And so, so scripture that had just been passed down by word of mouth was written down, and, and, and they had something to center them and to connect them and to give them strength. This beloved community that gathered in those little synagogues in Babylon first. I, I, I love that, that example, I love that uh, phrase, the beloved community, uh, describing church. It's my favorite, actually. Uh, it comes from, uh, most recently, Martin Luther King used this, talked about the beloved community, that, that he, his dream uh, was that uh, all people, no matter the race, would find America a beloved community. And, and that's, this phrase, beloved community, was inspired by visions like this. You see it back here, I see it over there. Uh, where I, I say, right, uh, in, in the Lord's voice, but now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. That nourished a people, and has nourished a people for generations uh, in new, in God's beloved community. Because what do we know about community? We know it starts when we know each other's names, right? Uh, when, uh, when you see that old man uh, getting mail from his mailbox, and you've learned to know him uh, by his name, Harry, and you've got to know his story enough that you know he's probably worried about bills that he may not be able to pay. Or you meet, uh, you meet your dog walking friend, uh, Fido's owner, who you finally, after seven times rehearsing the name, learned is Felicia, and you notice she now has a cancer bandana, and so you ask what's going on, and he promises to pray. Or, it's, uh, it's that father that drops off uh, the, the child you know, on Monday morning at the bus stop and then picks him up again Friday afternoon and you've learned to know him as Jason and now you learn that he's just distraught by the divorce. So by knowing the name and getting to know the story, you've, you've started creating a beloved community that includes those who are suffering and pretty soon uh, that community might include North Branch Church, and pretty soon they will know that God knows their name, and that God says they're precious, and God says he loves them, and it will change their lives. It always does. That's the power of learning somebody's name. And we know uh, that this is how God is wired us, right? One more, one more uh, piece of research. Um, we know that, that uh, the happiest people are the people who, who numerically know more of their neighbors' names than those who don't, right? It's correlated, right? And, and, and we know uh, uh, of a great study uh, from that uh, university that emanates, for, where all great studies emanate from, the University of Michigan. <laughs> Uh, has a study, yeah, particularly from my Ohio State my friends over here, um, that, that the study about, uh, again, about health and, and knowing people, and, and again, the most well-connected people, uh, as measured by how many of their neighbors' names they can, they can enumerate, the most well-connected people versus the least connected people have a, the well-connected have a 67% less chance in the span of a study, right, to die of heart disease. Because connection, a loving heart, uh, is, is uh, like builds an immunity. It keeps the ticker ticking. Power of knowing names and creating a beloved community. So, how many of your neighbors can you name? Next week will there be one more, right? Uh, or will you be the particular, the, the, the usual suburbanite and just uh, wave at your neighbors you drive by and open up your garage door and put your car in, like, close the garage door and no, no connection like so many of us live. How many, how many of you know the person sitting behind you or next to you or in front of you or, or down below you? 
How many names can you name? Right. Some of you are coming already, I can see. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and how many of us will go into coffee hour afterwards and learn one more person's name? And expand the beloved community. And then next Sunday, you can have the pleasure that I have every week of calling Phyllis Felicia. <laughs> and laughing with her when she corrects you. And just knowing that Phyllis is warmed by the fact that at least the old guy tried. <laughs> and you can too. Because by knowing somebody's name, we expand the beloved community. Let's do it. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love. And thank you for knowing me and us and everybody here and everybody who's not here on vacation or at Keswick or, or not related to faith or church at all. Thank you that you love us so much. You know us beyond our social security number. You know our names. And we ask that we might embody that great love that you have for us with each other in our own stumbling ways, so that by your grace, our neighbors may feel your love, and we may express it here. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray, and all God's people said.